Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. I'm going to be making a lovely risotto and hope you like that new logo. My daughter made that for me, isn't she clever? And there's a picture of the risotto, beautiful. Hello, um, making a pumpkin risotto. They're in season, so why not? All right then, first things first, let's prepare this rather smallish pumpkin. Using a whole pumpkin for this, but of course, just use as much pumpkin as you want. You could use butternut squash, etc., etc. It doesn't really matter. They're all gonna taste very similar. So um, in half it is, and then scooping out the seeds with a spoon. I find a spoon is the best way to do this. Take your time. What I'm doing there is two folds. Uh, by covering the bits left over, pulp and seeds with water, it helps to separate them because I can still use some of that pulp for my puree and I can also use the seeds. And I will share a link to a recipe I saw recently from a new YouTube friend of mine making some lovely roasted pumpkin seeds. Right, so um, cutting half of this pumpkin with the skin still on into just chunks that I'm going to roast. This is going to be for garnish and any leftovers you've got there, they just make a lovely uh, vegetable to accompany anything. So I heartily recommend doing this. And leaving the skins on is both lazy but also genius because it holds them together and then the skin becomes extremely palatable. It's lovely. So onto a baking sheet, olive oil, salt and pepper, plus any other spices, ingredients that you may care to add and into a nice hot oven for about you know half an hour or so. Right, let's remove the skin from the other half of this pumpkin. So here's one way of doing it, which is a little bit wasteful. I thought I'd show you, you might like this. So just basically, you can see what I'm doing. I'm running the knife as close to the inside of the skin, trying to retain as much flesh as possible and failing, losing quite a lot of flesh there. So that wasn't quite so good. And then obviously just cut away those seeds and here's the sort of more economical way of doing this where you'll waste less and I think it's probably safer as well. It's not rocking, rolling around on a curved edge, which is a bad habit. So there you go. That's probably the best way of doing it. It takes a bit longer, but whichever way you want to do it. And then, yeah, don't forget to get those bits of seeds out. So once you've got all the rest of your pumpkin flesh ready, let's um, set about making it into a puree. So first of all, cutting it into evenly approximately even sized pieces, heating a pan, popping the bits in there. I'm going to season that, again a bit of salt and pepper and I fancied a little background heat, just a, a little bit of warmth, it's not really spicy but yeah a little bit of chilli powder, you know, I don't know, that was that a quarter of a teaspoon I'm going to add in there, something like that. Just get that started, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it with some stock. You could just use water if you like. Um, now that's some sage. Sage in this recipe, I think sage and pumpkin just really works. And there's some chicken stock. I will share a link in the top corner to how to make chicken stock. And so get that covered. Meanwhile, that's my lovely roasted bits. I told you, look, look how lovely they are. And you may notice a slight difference in quality in the pictures in this video. I had a boo-boo and I dropped my old camera and broke the lens. So this is the old trusted camcorder came to save the day. Here we go. Uh, that's about 20 minutes or so of very gently steaming in that chicken stock. And I thought it's soft, but it's not quite soft enough. So I've added just a splash of water, put the lid back on. Five minutes later, I'm happy and let's just show you the sort of consistency I'm looking for here. So I'm just going to squish with a knife. You see how easily that fell apart? That's lovely. And rather than using a liquidizer or robo uh, the food processor or something, I've just gone in with the old masher because I wanted some texture here. And that is how I'm making my sort of rustic pumpkin puree. And I think it just looks absolutely fabulous. Full of lovely flavor, the chicken stock and the sage in there, gorgeous. Okay, so traditional risotto should always contain some onion, 
and I'm going to finely dice an onion. So just showing you the technique that us chefs use. There you go. And that way you get some lovely dice, but you also don't cut all the way through the root. But you're left with a bit of root at the end, so just grab that and do the same thing there. Looks a bit dangerous with your fingers there, but you sort of you claw and you pull them away as you're doing this. Anyway, once I've got all that done, I'm just going to run the knife through it. But if you've got a mechanical device that would do this for you, then use that. Okay, this is another flavour I wanted to add to my risotto. I wanted to get some brown butter with sage. Again, because the sage and the pumpkin, they're just, they're just made for each other. So, heat up some butter in a pan. I'm adding in some torn sage leaves there. They're going to do two things. They're going to infuse the butter, but they're also going to get like a little bit fried and crispy themselves. Really nice. If you're worried about your butter sort of browning a bit too quickly, because obviously it goes from being lovely golden brown with a nutty flavour to being gross and burnt and horrible very, very quickly. So if you think it is, obviously you can turn the heat down. I'm adding a little bit of olive oil just there. That sort of slows down that process of it burning. And once I think we're there, you should the aroma should be absolutely wonderful. just maybe 30 seconds or so at that stage and of course you don't have to do this you can just add sort of just butter in without it being brown later which would also be lovely but I'm just draining my bits of sage on some paper towel and reserving that wonderful burnt noisette as the French would call it here we go time to make the risotto so in goes the onion now if you're thinking about how much stock because this recipe isn't really exact it's it's pretty much a list of ingredients. Okay. You, it's not going to go wrong if you've got a little bit more, a little bit less of one thing. The other is personalised. So what I do, though, is a general rule of thumb is about three parts stock to one part of rice. So, just so you know, that there is the, I can't say this properly, carnarily rice. You could use arborio rice, but I do suggest you use a specific risotto rice. That is important. So the onions were sweated just for a moment, then I had about a minute with the rice in there just to chuff up the edges. It makes them a little bit more porous, they're absorbent, the, the liquid we're going to put in there will get into them, into those grains a bit easier. Large glass of white wine, you can use other wines, you can use red wine, but obviously you'll change the colour and the flavour of your finished risotto, so I almost always use white wine. Just till the wine has evaporated, so that we've cooked away the alcohol, then we can add in other flavours. So in with the pumpkin mush let's not call it a puree because it's not is it? it's a mush in goes that followed shortly by some stock now I'm using I said chicken stock you can use a vegetable stock whatever stock you like you can get a cube a stock cube and add some boiling water to it, it doesn't really matter just be aware of those stocks can tend to be a bit salty add in stock one spoonful at a time do not leave this risotto alone. You need to tend to it. You need to keep mixing it. So obviously Jerry calls me from next door. Say, sorry, Jerry, whatever mess you've got yourself into. I'm stirring my risotto. You'll have to sort yourself out. But here we go. Just keep stirring and stirring. Adding stock once it's sort of reduced and go down. Um, this is the traditional risotto making technique. There are techniques that you can just add all the liquid in, put a lid on it, and pop it in the oven. And those turn out really rather nice. But you know, this is the traditional way that the agitation of the rice is what will make it slightly more creamy and authentic. So then I did a little bit of research into risotto. It's Italian, everybody knows that. But it wasn't until the Middle Ages that the Arabs introduced rice to Europe, in particular Spain and Italy. And then many, many years later in Milan, they sort of come up with the actual risotto which we all know and love the milanese using the saffron and other spices and therefore then risotto is incredibly popular it's incredibly versatile you can do meat based ones fish based ones vegetables truffles whatever you know go with it it's up to you but while i was waffling there about a bit of history of risotto you can see me just to continue to add a bit of stock keep stirring it add a bit of stock after about it's about 20 minutes is, as a rule of thumb, is how long it would generally take to cook a risotto over a sort of medium to low heat. 
and I've tasted the grains. I want the grains to taste nice. I don't want them to be soft like porridge. I want them to have some toothsomeness, but you will know if they're undercooked because it won't be very nice. So basically the point when it's nice, in with some Parmesan, in with the butter. Give that another stir, that beautiful nutty butter. Have another taste, now we can season it. You may want to add some salt, I don't, because obviously I'm using Parmesan and I'm gonna finish it with Parmesan as well, but I'll put tons and tons of that beautiful black pepper in there. And it's ready to plate up. Don't hang about here as well, get it in a bowl, make sure everyone's ready, whoever's having it, because it's best had immediately. So into the bowl, give it a little shake about, so it's flat, that's a nice way of doing it. And then I've reheated my bits of roasted pumpkin because we're gonna make this look all fancy and posh like a restaurant. Arrange a few of those little fried sage leaves. Another scattering of Parmesan. Beautiful, that, I'll share a link to that one. That is my cured egg yolk. I just thought, yeah, that, that'll finish this off a treat. And let's have a taste. Yes, that is very, very nice. Now, the next day, I had some risotto left over, and you'll notice the camera has changed. My lens arrived, so now we've gone back to my new camera, and I think I can tell the difference immediately. So I thought, arancini, why not? That's what that's what leftover risotto is for. So very quickly, I won't do a whole video on making arancini, because this will be a bit long, but briefly, form some balls. I've got damp hands, and I decided I'm gonna make a little dent in the middle, a little hole, and I've put a bit of cashel blue, which is a nice soft, creamy Irish blue cheese. Beautiful, but you know, a bit of mozzarella in there, or nothing at all, doesn't really matter. Just encase that completely, form those lovely balls. These are quite small. Usually arancini is a bit larger. And I say it was the Sicilians that did this. Again, it was those Arabs. And I'm gonna crumb this now. So I didn't need any flour. If you've seen me pané before, this is the uh, the patented Uncle Matt's slotted spoon technique for not getting messy hands. Yes, wonder in awe at my inventiveness. And you will not get messy hands doing it this way, because look, the spoon has taken off all the egg. So we went in the crumb, into some egg, back into the crumb. Take your time, but get those really, really well coated so they're not damp at all. Keep them to the side, and when you've got them all done, heat up some oil. I've decided to shallow fry it rather than deep fry it in this occasion. Just a little tester. Is the oil hot? Yes, it's hot. Very gently, very gently, please, ladies and gentlemen, in with your balls. I started off with three, couple of minutes on one side, flip them over again, very gently. Try not to break them. They, they might want to explode a little bit. Some of them did. And I thought I can squeeze another one in there. And then just a few minutes on the other side, and you know, that's it really. That's making arancini. Aren't they nice? Oh, gorgeous. And then once they're ready, you know, serve those immediately as well. Arranged on a little board there. And I thought, well, what I'm going to do here, because I'm going to get a nice cheese stretch image. I'm going to cut it in half. And uh, no, it didn't work. It just squished, as you can see. And the cheese on the inside just um, mixed in with the rice. So it just basically made this gorgeous blue cheese flavored arancini, but I didn't get to do the famous cheese stretch. But anyway, that's that. Yes, it's absolutely piping hot. And now I'm gonna hand you back over to me for the tasting. Okay, um, risotto really is one of those dishes you eat it as soon as you've made it. Obviously I've faffed about for a couple of minutes there with photos. Let's have a go, shall we? My love risotto. Mm. Oh. And that roasted pumpkin with the skin on it is great. With the sage. Don't be afraid of making risotto. Give this pumpkin one a try. I think you'll really like it. Catch you in the next video. Come real soon. Bye.